Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Chief Smith and Assistant Chief Martinez for uh, being here as well. On June 5th of this year, we took groundbreaking and unprecedented legal action by filing criminal and civil charges against the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis for its role in failing to protect children and contributing to the unspeakable harm done to three young sexual abuse victims of Curtis Waymar. In announcing our criminal and civil charges on June 5th, we identified three important goals. First, to hold the Archdiocese accountable for its role in contributing to the harm done to our three victims. To seek justice for our victims and our community, which includes all victims of clergy sex abuse and also to take necessary steps to ensure that this never happens again. As I reflect on the tremendous effort that has been undertaken by my staff and investigators from the St. Paul Police Department over the past 27 months, I want to again thank those who came forward to tell the truth. Without their courage, we would not be here today. Throughout this process, we have proceeded deliberately with integrity, faithfulness to the process and the law, and with an unwavering commitment to do the right thing, regardless of external pressures to do things differently. Today, I am very pleased to announce that we have reached an unprecedented and landmark civil settlement with the Archdiocese, assuming a approval by the Bankruptcy Court. I also want to make it very clear that the criminal action is separate. We have not reached agreement in that case, so the criminal prosecution will continue. As a commitment to meaningful change, the Archdiocese has agreed to be subject to the oversight of our office and the courts for three years as they continue to transform their organizational culture and practices with respect to addre addressing clergy sexual abuse. By way of this 24-page settlement agreement, the Archdiocese has agreed to implement important compliance standards that incorporates best practices from across the country with new standards that do not exist anywhere else. These new compliance standards will set forth a clear standard of response when suspected child abuse becomes known to individuals within the archdiocese. With these standards, no longer will it be possible for its leaders to assert that they did not know about suspected child sex abuse. Over the next three years, our office will be substantially involved in two independent outside audits to ensure compliance with all of the provisions in this agreement, the outcomes of which will be shared with the public. Critical to all of this is judicial oversight to enforce compliance in the event that there is a breach of this agreement. In my opinion, the most important part of this agreement is, re is the requirement that when allegations of misconduct, including child sex abuse, arise in the future, all allegations will now be addressed by the Ministerial Review Board, rather than allowing one or two clergy members determine how best to respond. The Ministerial Review Board is comprised primarily of laypersons who will evaluate the cleric's fitness for ministry. The agreement also incorporates many of the October 2014 Child Protection Protocols agreed upon by the Archdiocese and Jeff Anderson and Associates, as well as the 2014 recommendations of the SAFE Environment Task Force. These provisions will all now be subject to verification, oversight, and enforcement. 
The Archdiocese has also agreed to notify local law enforcement of the location of any cleric with a substantiated claim or pending credible allegation of sexual abuse of a minor. They will convene a conference for restorative justice and reconciliation to bring about further accountability and healing to victims and stakeholders. And they will establish an ombudsperson to assist victims and their families moving forward. If ever necessary, this agreement also requires that the Director of Safe Environments and the Ministerial Review Board have access to outside legal counsel so that they do not have to rely solely on internal archdiocese legal counsel. From now on, all clergy must report any arrest or citation that violates archdiocese policies to the safe environment director who will then determine whether the matter should be brought to the archbishop and or the ministerial review board. Moving forward, when a cleric has been found not guilty of criminal conduct by civil authorities or has been investigated without prosecution, the archdiocese will make an independent inquiry into and determination of the priest's fitness for ministry. Furthermore, the agreement requires the board of directors to undertake more oversight of the safe environment program in order to ensure accountability at the highest levels of the archdiocese. Again, this is a 24-page agreement. Uh, these are some of the highlights, but there is much, much more that you and the public will find important. Overall, this historic agreement ensures systemic change and creates a framework of accountability that increases oversight and transparency and ultimately supports a cultural shift in how the Archdiocese protects children and responds to alleged abuse. Under this, under this agreement, the hierarchy of the Archdiocese may no longer conceal or minimize clergy sex abuse. I want to thank my staff, uh, in particular Tom Ring, Stephanie Wiersma, and Driel Bernardi, and the Archdiocese Attorney Joe Dixon uh, for their hard work in putting together this settlement agreement. Many of these requirements could not have been imposed on the Archdiocese by a judge as a condition of probation or as a part of a civil judgment under the Child Protection Statute that we have utilized. I want to thank the Archdiocese through Archbishop Hebda, Bishop Cousins, and Director O'Malley for agreeing to go beyond what the court could have ordered them to do. Litigating the issues in the civil case would have continued on for an extended period of time. This settlement agreement came together as we began to focus on what we could agree on, how best to protect children moving forward. With the current leadership and the extensive involvement of laity that is established by this agreement, I have great confidence the settlement provisions will be effectively implemented and will serve as a model for other archdioceses <coughs> across the country. This three-year agreement and all that it requires will set the foundation for the long term. If we detect any deviation from these promises, this office will certainly do what needs to be done to protect children and the public interest to enforce this agreement. Since all of this began, we have seen some promising developments. The resignations of Archbishop Neinstead, Bishop Bichet, the appointment of a layperson as the new director of safe environments, who is now empowered to implement change, and a revamped and reinvigorated ministerial review board comprised primarily of lay people that has begun to take action on priests suspected of abuse. The spirit of reform within the archdiocese now 
includes the implementation of this agreement, having its actions independently verified and subject to oversight. Through the requirements in this agreement, it is my expectation that never again will the facts of this case be repeated and the protection of children will forever be of paramount importance within this archdiocese. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over to Chief Smith. I just have a few uh, uh, words to say. And, and first off, I want to thank County Attorney John Choi and his dedicated staff. Um, the partnership and the thousands and thousands of hours that we've worked on this investigation, uh, you don't see that very often. But we had a goal to keep people safe, and we had to do that. I have Assistant Chief Martinez and Sergeant uh, Investigator Eric Skog here. Uh, that were part of uh, working with John Choi and his staff to make sure that people are held accountable and that we keep families safe. But I want to end by saying that, you know, this entire investigation has included a lot of emotions. A lot of emotions. Emotions from investigators and attorneys. Emotions from victims of the families of the abuse families, different organizations, and for that matter, the general public as well. But I want to end again by saying that John Choi and his office never wavered. They were creative in their thinking. And all of these people with all of these emotions that I just mentioned all agree on one thing. We want to make children and families safer. And with the work by John Choi's office, that's exactly what's going to happen. Thank you. Okay, quick reminder, when you do ask a question, please state your name, your organization, and then the question. I imagine most of those questions will be directed at the county attorney. So, who wants to go first? Amy. Amy Ferlitti, the Associated Press. Um, you mentioned the oversight would be from your office and the courts. Can you explain a little bit how that would work? Yeah, um, we're going to be very substantially involved with um, developing the scope of the audit and working with the Archdiocese as it fulfills those particular requirements. And essentially what the audit is going to do is going to review um, the activities of the Archdiocese over the past uh, year, one year period. And they will be looking to make sure that they have fulfilled all of their promises. And that report uh, or that audit will be delivered to our office. We will review that. If there are any issues in which we believe that there has not been compliance, then we will put uh, the archdiocese on notice, and then they will have an opportunity to cure um, that um, non-compliance. And if it does not change, if there's ever an issue, then we bring the matter uh, before the court, and then they will have jurisdiction uh, to decide on the matter. So essentially, uh, what we're doing is we're making sure that everything that is contained in this agreement, every promise, uh, our office will be involved with the auditor uh, to make sure that it has been done, or we have an explanation of what's happening, and then if there are issues, then the court will have oversight. And I think that is very significant. Um, Chow Hyun with Star Tribune. I realize that the criminal and civil cases are separate, of course, um, but the consequences of the criminal case uh, require a lot less work on behalf of the Archdiocese. Can you talk about why that hasn't resolved and how those negotiations are ongoing? Can you s explain to me what you mean by sure. that? You said There's less work. Six gross misdemeanors, you know, punishable by a couple thousand dollars in fines. That seems like it would require a lot less work than this action plan. Can you talk about why that criminal case hasn't resolved? And how those negotiations are going, ongoing, or have they been closed? Have they been, most of them far apart on that case? Well, the criminal matter is pending, it's ongoing, and it will be moving toward resolution in Ramsey County District Court. And so, because it's pending, I really don't want to get into the nuance of that particular case. 
Um, but again, I really want to stress this because I think this is the most, uh, one of the most important points that all of you have to really understand is that whether it was by conviction or a verdict on the civil case, right? And we, if we were to have prevailed, what the judge could have ordered as it relates to what the statute allows or what criminal procedure allows could never have been what is in this agreement. Because we have the First Amendment, we have limitations of what the statute allows in terms of remedial uh, uh, relief. So I think that credit should be given to the archdiocese to agree to do these things. They are doing these things and we have insisted upon these things because we started to focus on something that we could agree on, which was the protection of children moving forward and therefore um, we started working on this agreement and this is what it is. Uh, Lee Hanfish here from NPR. Um, were the criminal proceedings being put on hold so that you can work out through work this agreement out, or how how is how has it affected the criminal proceedings? Because it's also being continued. Uh, I'm not sure that it's being continued. It's proceeding uh, as the judge uh, will order, and so there will be a process for the criminal case, and it's moving forward. Uh, I can question. clarify that later. Thank you. Uh, why haven't you asked for a speedy trial for the criminal proceedings? Um, because we're, we were working on the resolution of this particular case and there are complicated issues relative to the bankruptcy and the resolution of the civil case. And so typically, generally speaking, in a criminal matter, you would typically want the criminal case to go first, right? That's the paradigm that exists in criminal court. Um, but I think this particular situation Create, uh, required our creativity and to not necessarily just impose that paradigm and to think about how we could best um, um, have something that would serve the public interest and protect children and so what we decided to do was start focusing on a resolution of the civil case first and I think because of uh, the work, the hard work that's been done um, we have a product um, that could never never have been achieved uh, by doing it the other way. Chuck? Uh, why hasn't the Archbishop <coughs> or someone else from the church been required to appear at these court hearings? I mean, from the lowest level offenses to the highest level offenses, you see defendants in court all the time from drunk driving to murder. Why hasn't someone else from the church, aside from Joe Dixon, been in these hearings? I don't have an answer for that, other than the fact that uh, the, the defendant is a corporation, uh, which in law is a person. Amy? You mentioned that um, part of the agreement requires that allegations go to the ministerial review board now instead of one or two people. Why won't, why won't the allegations go to law enforcement? Oh, thank you for that question. And when you see the agreement, you will, it will be very clear that all, any allegations involving criminal sexual conduct, just anything, the law applies, okay? And so you will see promises in here that say that they will never, ever, do their own investigation, they will cooperate with uh, uh, law enforcement, that's just given, okay? So in this agreement, it promises to do that. So, but after a criminal investigation and prosecution, then in terms of how they're going to manage these situations, uh, will not be done and decided upon by one or two clergy members. What it's going to involve is the full involvement of the Ministerial Review Board, which is a board comprised primarily of lay people. From my perspective, that was one of the big problems in the case that we had with uh, involving <coughs> Curtis Waymire. Uh, the power and the decision making was really focused around just one or two people. And so what we're doing here is we're creating a, system, a systemic change in how the Archdiocese handles and responds to these situations, which now will include the review board and the board of directors and others. And so it's going to be very difficult for anybody who, if they have an agenda, to minimize or conceal 
any type of misconduct involving the abuse of children. Uh, with this agreement, we have a new way, a new way of doing these things that will be imposed on the archdiocese, and to their credit, they have agreed to move in this direction. Elizabeth and then Raheem. Um, Elizabeth Morrow with the Pioneer Press. Um, I was under the impression that the archdiocese had already sort of implemented some child protection plan, maybe as part of an earlier civil suit. Can you explain <coughs> how this is different, why this is different, how this goes beyond what they were supposedly already doing? Well, first of all, all of those things that they were already doing, some of those things are contained in this agreement, right? But those were just promises that they made to the public. They were not enforceable. They did not have the oversight of this office. They did not have judicial involvement. So that's the first point. The second point uh, with respect to what is required is that um, there is going to be a whole set of things. You'll see a section with respect to compliance standards. And they're agreeing to do all of these things that, um, many things that are not involved with any of the child protection protocols that were done earlier or a part of the um, uh, Safe Environment Committee. So you, you will see, and I'll let the document speak for itself, but there's a lot of things in here. Um, I mean, just as an example, um, from here on forward, the Archdiocese will inform law enforcement of any cleric who has a substantiated claim of child abuse or a pending claim. As an example, there are priests who I believe should have been convicted in criminal court a long time ago, and they should be registered sex offenders. Uh, but here what we're going to do is we're going to require the Archdiocese to make sure that a community and at least the chief law enforcement agency uh, knows that if somebody um, is in that situation, that they're, they're, they have knowledge of that person. John. Uh, John Carlman from CARE 11. Uh, John, a lot of these Jeff Anderson lawsuits, there's been this pattern of moving people around and people who were never uh, formally charged or even sued were moved to other uh, divisions uh, within the church, Catholic Church where they had access to children. Is there anything in this agreement that addresses that particular issue? Yes, thanks, John, for that question. There are provisions that will address some of those issues, but it's really about the systemic change. What you just identified, those decisions were made by one or two people, maybe three, and they were uh, clergy, dealing with clergy. And what this agreement does and what we're going to do moving forward is to set up a new way, a systemic change that involves more laity in these particular decisions so that they have knowledge of them and they have meaningful uh, say in what happens in the future. I think that's really the biggest and most important part of all of this is the empowerment of uh, Director O'Malley, the empowerment of the Ministerial Review Board, the empowerment and the expectation of the Board of Directors. You know, the Board of Directors did not know all any of the stuff that was happening with respect to Curtis Waymar. And from here on forward, we have this expectation that they have a much better understanding and a much more uh, significant involvement in these decisions. I think that is so critical and that is the reform and the change that this agreement will bring uh, for uh, the Catholic faithful and our community. Let's take one or two more questions. Rob. Rob Olson with Fox 9. John, who, how many people will be on this review board and who selects them? Uh, the Archdiocese does and you can ask questions about the review board to them. I have seen the list of um, uh, who is on the board. Uh, Ten of the twelve are lay members. It is staffed entirely by uh, uh, lay people uh, within the archdiocese. Some of those people that are on that list, um, I have the greatest respect for. And so uh, I am very confident with this agreement that infuses lay person involvement in this decision making, which creates redundancies and creates checks and balances around how we handle these things in the future or how the church handles these things in the future. Um, I feel very good about uh, our future. Brittany? Well, 
You had mentioned in June that the investigation is still ongoing. Where is that investigation at right now? Still ongoing. <laughs> so because there's any new complaints of clergy abuse, either past or present. Excuse me? Okay. 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 You were the police department who received any new allegations of clergy abuse, past or present. Um, I don't believe so, but um, again, I'm not going to address the ongoing investigation or the criminal matter. Again, it is moving forward toward resolution in Ramsey County District Court. Okay, thanks everybody. I know you have a um, another engagement um, over at the Archdiocese. If you didn't know that, you do now. 30 minutes following.